Hey, what's going on, Soul Nation? Ginger Prime here and bringing to you today probably the most requested video that has been asked of me for the last couple of weeks, and it's how is WoW treating you? How are you enjoying World of Warcraft being a complete World of Warcraft noob here in 2020 and having spent the last 17 years in Final Fantasy Online? I'm grouping Final Fantasy 11 and 14 together because that's primarily the majority of my online experience say with a handful of forays into other games. Now, I, a couple things that I wanna say at the top of the show, at the top of the video here for you guys today, so we're all on the same page. I've had a very long and hard day at work. I'm doing this because this is something I really, really wanna give you guys, and I'm really curious as your thoughts. The other side of that is I've been drinking a little bit, so just be warned on that regards. And I think before we really dive into the meat of the video itself, I think I should say that it is a sad state of affairs that the following must be said, especially at the top of this video, but I am only going to be talking about my experiences with WoW, Shadowlands, pre-patch and on. I have really no experience prior. So that's history, that's drama, all of it. I'm just going to leave it over on the left-hand side and only address it if you guys feel like you'd like me to. All right, that being said, Activision continues to annoy me, and they they do so on the regular, but at the same time, I'm honestly really excited about what Mike Morham is doing with Dreamhaven Studios, and I cannot wait to hear more. That's going to be the last I really say, uh, you know kind of say about it. This is going to be focusing in on the current state of WoW as a brand new player in 2020 stepping into pre-patch for Shadowlands especially having pretty much my experience being Final Fantasy. Now that I've repeated myself, I think it's only fair that we set some context so we're all on the same page because I don't know who this video is going to get recommended out to. I don't know who you're going to share this video with. And let's just get all on the same page. And if you permit me, this will be short and sweet. My name is Brian. I played Final Fantasy XI for over seven plus years. I played 14 now for 10-ish years total. That's an insane amount of time. Uh, I've also briefly and barely touched WoW in a very limited, com you know, compassion. Anyway, that's the beer in me. Uh, com anyway, a very limited way. Just a handful of hours over the course of what? How long has WoW been out? A long time. So very briefly, enough to where I've heard of it. I know that uh, it, it exists and I am learning uh, just so much about it over the last couple of days. Um, and so now that we're all on the same page, let's start with the obvious. And if you know me, and if you don't, howdy, but regardless, I love controllers. It's one of the big key factors of Final Fantasy XI and Final Fantasy XIV for me. It's one reason why I stick with these games over the long run. Like I said at the top of this episode, I literally have just had a very hard day at work. And that's me on the mouse and keyboard. And the last thing I do when I when I get off of work, uh, as I spend all of my days on the mouse and keyboard, is to want to touch a mouse and keyboard again. And it is true with games. And so games are an escape. Games are a way that I just kind of get disconnected from the daily. And it allows me to kind of play in this world. And the fact that they brought controller support in natively is a huge win in my book. It needs work and I'm going to keep putting out feedback as well as continue to kind of play around to try to make it very comfortable. And I'm aware there's add-ons and we'll talk about add-ons here later in the video, but I still am very happy that it's native and I can't wait to see whether Blizzard supports it or the add-on community is able to take this native API and run with it. That being said, I do feel so incredibly spoiled by how Final Fantasy has done over the year, starting with 11 and then even going into 14. And I'm still surprised to this day that no one has copied Final Fantasy 14's Cadillac experience when it comes to playing with a controller. You think you can't play MMOs on a controller? Well, continue to live in your ignorance, you beautiful slut. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that got a laugh. I'm sure someone's gonna sure someone's gonna hate me for that at some point. Anyhow, let's continue on if we will. So the biggest amount of praise that I really want to like kind of toss World of Warcraft's way is the, the starting zone. Holy crap, jumping into this world, that starting zone, that tutorial, it all felt fantastic. I don't 
even know how it was done before this. And so going into this game, having the tutorials, kind of having it ease my way through the world felt like a really good introduction. My friend Chris, who I was playing with, it was kind of saying like it's the game's greatest hits and he is over the moon about how this plays. From here, it jumped me into the BFA expansion and this is where, it's not a negative, I have no connection to what's going on. My connection is rooted with you guys are hanging out with me on stream with Chris, who I'm playing with this, this the, the WoW community on our Discord. Like, that is what is keeping me grounded. But I honestly just feel like, hey, I'm into this world. And that's what I kind of, like, it's not necessarily, like I said, it's not a negative. It literally could be considered a positive, especially because it is a big world. It is this mysterious place. I'm starting to get to know some characters. And all in all, I really appreciate, and this is another thing about the zones, just how connected they are. So one of the things that makes Final Fantasy XIV feel a little dated, even though it has a very beautiful aesthetic to it, but zone lines feels like in WoW, I'm just kind of running for days. I'm sure there's going to be a loading zone. I'm sure there's going to be some kind of loading screen that I hit maybe at some point, but the world just feels so giant. And it could also just be attached to how they've done the art style because these games are so vastly different with how they look and feel. Now... That all being said, I still love and appreciate everything that Final Fantasy XIV has done. And zones ultimately don't bother me. They're, that's a part of these games that I've spent so much time with. But it's unique for me to be able to jump into these worlds, uh, especially in World of Warcraft, and just kind of run and feel like I can continue to run. Uh, New World gave me that same kind of feeling. And it honestly has me really excited to see whatever Final Fantasy or Square Enix decides to do at some point in the future. Now, we've kind of talked about that. Ultimately, we're going to just have to wait and see with everybody else what's coming down the pipeline. But it is impressive, to say the least. It is impressive to be running around the world and not hit these artificial lines and have such an aesthetic change to the design of the game when that happens. Sure, I've you know hit a flight path and jumped into BFA and you know the aesthetics have changed. But you know what? It is what it is, and I am really, really quite impressed with it. The second thing I want to say in the praise category tends to be the level squish the uh the fact that i'm not leveling up to 120 and the fact that i only have to go to currently 50 right now and when uh shadow lands eventually drops and the, the story and all that goes to 60 that's i was really nervous about it at first i was really concerned overall with that aspect of the game and now that i'm going hands on it with a new as a new player it completely kind of takes away that fear if you're going to tell me i had to go to 120 or 130 to kind of get to the end of the game obviously that just kind of pushes me into where people recommend jump potions but i don't like jump potions i don't agree with them in concept i get them from a business level i get them from why they exist overall and i think that it ends up just being it's easier and faster to deliver that solution rather than build out a better solution. Anyway, that being my personal take on the situation, I don't want that. I don't want to necessarily have to feel I use that. So I'm leveling from level one up to the up to the whatever. Now the game did actually also shower me with some boost potions, which I've used on additional characters that I have yet to touch. I want to spend more time with the game itself before I even consider touching these artificially boosted characters that I got for my Shadowlands version of the game. Also, shout out to Leland. Thank you so much for actually purchasing me said copy of Shadowlands. It really is a generous gift above and beyond anything that anybody here in the community needs to do. So, the level squish, though, has... there. Were, I didn't realize there was a burden there. The burden has been removed. I don't know how I'm going to feel over the long-term haul of it. If everything continues to get resunk back to 50 and every time an expansion comes out every two years or so, if you're always leveling up to 60, I get it, but I don't know. <laughs> it does make all the levels do, I, like feel significant. It does make all of my kit continue to evolve and I'm having a lot of fun opening up new things, especially as a druid, which I can shape, shape and forms. Like, I love this. It's what I wanted Blue Mage to be in a way. Not to like spend too much like time on Final Fantasy here for you guys, but I really wished Blue Mage had taken the role of what Druid represents. A job that can, you know, shapeshift into its into its style of role 
thus giving ultimate flexibility. And they could always do that with another kind of job. I just thought it'd be kind of unique to see something like that in Final Fantasy XIV for the time being. So all in all, like I said, I'm not really feeling connected to the story and the world yet. That's not to say that I won't, um, but I've got to only experience a small portion of it. That's kind of where I was really surprised how many people reached out and said they wanted for me to weigh in on the subject, weigh in with my initial thoughts. And I think it's fair. I mean, there's there's a lot to really talk about, and I don't want to sit here and try to come across to you as some kind of expert of the game itself, but having been or at least considered an expert in the Final Fantasy world, uh, just, you know, from my controller guides and, you know, making content, but just the sheer amount of time that I put into those games, as my brother says, after you do a thousand hours of something, you're an expert in it. It's like, okay, uh, if we go off of that definition alone, that's kind of how I ultimately end up seeing it. Um, will this ever, I think, replace Final Fantasy for me? I just can't answer that at this time. I would, like, I can't... <laughs> It's funny, and this is just kind of the booze in me. I would say no. Like, I would say, like, for me, Final Fantasy is that world that I choose to, to live in. Not because I have, um, you know, like, I, I think it's perfect. And not because, you know, there aren't times where I'm just like, gosh, this game, come on, Square. But because, like, this is something, like, that is rooted in who I am. I didn't play Final Fantasy 11 and 14, you know, because... Uh, they were these perfect games. I played them because I had such a love and, and, and deep impact and connection and nostalgia for Final Fantasy overall. Final Fantasy XIV being a wellspring of that kind of style. I don't have a deep connection to World of Warcraft. I touched the RTSs back in the day and I didn't grow up with it. Like it came out, I, I you know, like I said, barely touched it. And then here I am actually playing it. And here I am having a good time. My hope here, let me just kind of rephrase my own argument, is my hope is, is that, you know, I get to cap and I'm still playing. And my hope is that Shadowlands comes out and I have a great time and I'm still playing. I have no, like, qualms about being subscribed to multiple MMORPGs as long as I'm finding great times to kind of jump in and out of them. I would personally love to be more versed in the world of Warcraft with its community and having a better understanding about it. And that brings me kind of to like a positive and a negative. It's it's on both sides. I am both impressed and spoiled by Final Fantasy um, by just the sheer amount of quality of life that's built into the game by default. And then I'm also impressed by the sheer community of API developers that have gone out and about and made things for WoW to really kind of make the overall game and experience better. So in like 14, I want to do something. Okay, this is how you do that. Or, sorry, but you can't do that. That's that's the world you live in in that in, in those games. In the world of Warcraft, <laughs> in the world of what, you know, WoW, uh, you end up having the option of saying, oh, there's an add-on for that. Oh, there's an add-on for that. And that's both positive and negative. Seeing how to be able to move my like hot bars, to do all these things that I would just think would be natural by now in 2020, and then having them just be purely add-on driven, it is a positive and a negative. It's a positive overall, but at the same time, it does make me feel that I've been too hard on 14 in the past, that I've taken for granted just the sheer amount of quality of life, what they give me the ability to do without having to go about and do other things. So uh, I, I do feel a little bit humbled in a way for what I've experienced uh, both in WoW and 14 over these years. And so that, I, you know, it's kind of hard to classify it because I would love to have add-ons added into Final Fantasy 14. I would love for them to open up the API so more people could do more things with it. But its console nature obviously makes that a little bit challenging. But still, from a communal-driven experience, the fact that you know Blizzard can look and say, hey, this is what people are using and what they really need, we can go about adding that. And that kind of brings me to another point. Like, we were doing a boss fight, and there was all these different kind of, you know, things are placed on the ground, and everybody was kind of marveling that, like, you really, there's no kind of universal thing of what to not stand in and what to stand in, in some degrees. I'm, again, not speaking as an expert, saying I've run everything, and I know what it all looks like, but 14 does, I think, a decent job of communicating to you varying mechanics and then taking those mechanics and ev evolving them in harder content. My beer is uh, starting to weigh in on me, making me <laughs> feel a little sleepy. So 
I think I'm going to leave it with that, guys. Like, this isn't shouldn't be a comprehensive be-all, end-all, go play this game, don't go play this game, uh, you know, kind of concepts. This is just my first impressions as I continue to play the game. And my goals, I guess the best way I can kind of conclude this is that my goals with World of Warcraft are to hit cap. To have maybe even a couple characters at cap. To continue to play and test out the controller support. Because that's something that keeps me coming back. That's something that, that has me wanting to log in and play when I'm not streaming. And that's critical. I'm going to yawn and I'm going to leave it in. Because I think it's time for us all to kind of relax, stretch our legs, get some fresh air. Go either to sleep or to wake up and have a fantastic day. Whatever and however this video finds you, I hope that you are well and that you are safe. And hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did and you feel like I've earned anything. Just let me know in the comments below. If you share it out, if you subscribe, if you like it, it's up to you. There's no pressure in this, you know, this activity. This is just a dude talking to some of, you know, somebody online. And hopefully, you, hopefully, it's at least made you smile and not, uh, you know, driven you to the point of, in, uh, you know, gamer rage or anything like that. That's a, it's a real thing, and it comes up from time to time. But I'm gonna conclude with an adios <laughs> amigos and hopefully you guys have a great one and i'll see you hopefully in my next video but until then take care this video is sponsored by me ginger prime hopefully you'll check out my podcast channel ginger gaming radio which we have lots of guests lots of great conversations and even more highlights links are in the description below let me know what you think thanks